Colin, we have a lot to talk about, obviously, in terms of, uh, of vaccines and all sorts. But can I ask you, first of all, your reaction, I suppose, to two things. One is the scenes of people on the streets drinking over the weekend and indeed the criticism of those people. Good morning, Kira. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, it's been, a, I just listened to your conversation, there's really been a tough year for young, old, young alike. And as you say, younger people, uh, for the most part, did their best to protect their older uh, citizens. And uh, a huge acknowledgement is required by all of us to them because they've suffered also from isolation, from lost opportunities in life, uh, from not being able to travel, do all the normal things we were able to do. So um, it's understandable why people would feel, um, would feel the need uh, that some kind of release, as we see the beginning of the easing of social restrictions, but what I would say also, Kira, it, it, this it, some of the scenes looked like V Day uh, in the sense it, it was as if the virus had surrendered, and this this virus doesn't surrender. It's mm-hmm. not like that. It exploits complacency. It exploits our weakest position, and the weakest position, of course, is those who are unvaccinated, because it's kind of magical thinking, isn't it, to think if you're not vaccinated that you're protected. It exploits uh, congested gatherings. Certainly exploits situations where there's alcohol, and while, as you point out, outdoors is safer than indoors big congested crowds for long periods of time with alcohol and the virus do not mix well. OK, so so you are concerned when, when you when you see those things. I, I, I was saying that it, my experience of seeing, you know, social media, etc. column is, is that large crowds have been mixing outdoors long before this weekend and the cases have remained relatively stable. That's true. And I, I, I certainly agree with you. Um, it, we've been seeing that trend over recent weeks of kind of signalling anticipation as people saw their, saw those easing of social restrictions was coming and it's understandable people would feel some sense of release and of jubilation but as I said Kira, this is not V-Day it's a it's a longer war uh, and uh, the, vac- the vaccine such as it knows to do anything only can do one thing and that's trans- jump from one person to another which will do as we know with ease and whenever, whenever it's given the opportunity. As regards the numbers it's a good point absolutely but we've seen the past and I'm, I'm trying to keep us optimistic in this because I think really as I said last time I met you there's a huge amount to be optimistic about we've seen a collapse in case numbers and it's largely attributable uh, to the vaccine programme and enormous uptake if I could just give you one figure Kira, um, the first four weeks of this year we saw 6,800 cases over 75 years of age and in, in the past four weeks uh, 165 so we, we've just seen a collapse of cases among those who've been vaccinated and the, the numbers where people focus on the number of people vaccinated and we anticipate sometime today we're going to see 50% of the eligible population have received at least one dose but it's those who've received have been the most vulnerable older people healthcare workers those where the healthcare, where the virus can do the most possible harm and that's where we're seeing the greatest gain so there's a lot to be positive about despite all this noise over the weekend Yeah and 50% yeah. of the adult population I mean that is a magnificent figure, dare I say it, and and it really is. And I know it's only only one dose, but it still confers a degree of, of immunity. Moving forward into June, obviously we've heard that there are are, are blows coming down the line to the Johnson and Johnson supply chain, etc. Where are we now in terms of how on track or otherwise, you know, for June and that and that eighty two percent figure by the end of June, Colm? Where we've been pushed one side to another, buffeted by the supplies right from the beginning, Kira, as you know, uh, and we've had difficulty. And actually, the one constant now, the Pfizer vaccine schedule, the supplies seem to be remarkably constant. And yet, we uh, between AstraZeneca and Janssen, we've, we've received last minute change of deliveries. Sometimes the deliveries we anticipate for one month being pushed to the end of the month. So there has been that volatility which has marked the programme. But that point you made earlier, uh, it's, it's, it's not just, as I said, um, the numbers of people, but the uptakes of, uh, the uptake of this vaccine has been astonishing. Over over 80 years of age, 98% of eligible people have taken it. 70 to 79 year olds took it in their droves, 95%. The 60 to 69 year olds, we were worried because it was the AstraZeneca vaccine and that only they were being offered, almost 90% uptake. And so it is with the 50 to 59 and so on right down there. We're seeing levels of uptake and engagement here and enthusiasm that, that is the envy of the rest of Europe and we're seeing the results of it come through in terms of a collapse in a number of cases. The collapse in harm that has caused among uh, vulnerable people, uh, or, uh, among people who've been vaccinated. And looking into June, we hope finish out the 50-59s. We'll be opening that portal for 40 to 45 year olds later this week and hopefully beginning them in the middle of June. And we aim to have got through the great majority of those, certainly by the end of the month into July. So Will we be I close to the 80%, 80% do, you, do you think, Colm? Um, I think it's hard. I, I, I'd, I'd love to say we, we, we will d- definitely get there, but because of these supply difficulties, it's very hard to be certain. Okay. But what I can say to people is uh, that the, the, 
it's the impact, not just the percentage of the population, the impact, the groups that have been targeted first, those nursing homes, older people, the decreasing ages, it has a, had a huge impact in terms of a collapse in the heart. We, we've really given this uh, virus a kick in the you-know-what and its, 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 its ability to cause harm has certainly significantly reduced. Okay. 